Okay, so this is another example where the notations are different, and so I, would, I wanted to solve this question. This is one of the practice questions that I posted on course uh, site for week three. Um, so here we have the demand curve. All right. So the quantity demand is equal to 50 times P. So P is the price of the output and Q is the quantity of the output. And um, the firm is monopolist in the output market. In the input market, uh, there is a labors and N is the number of labors and Q equals 2N is the Y equals F of X. All right, so it's the production function. And then it's, uh, the firm is perfectly competitive in the input market. All right. So this is basically case two. Um, and then the firm is because it's a perfectly competitive market in the input uh, market. It's a perfectly competitive firm in the input market. It takes the wage as given, which is denoted by W. So the question was, well, given the W, uh, what would be the optimal output and the price for the monopolist? And how many labors would the firm hires? All right. So find the optimal quantity, optimal price, and optimal N, given W, obviously. Okay. So that's it. That's a very straightforward and standard question. So once again, because the notations are different, all right? Again, don't memorize things because uh, in a question like this, you have to translate all the formula into this new notation, which is gonna be very confusing. Um, so for that reason, just remember the profit function and then solve it, optimize it, all right? I think that's, that's definitely an easy way to solve a question. So profit function of the firm, always, write it as revenue minus cost. Revenue is number of output times price of output minus the cost is number of input times the price of input. All right. So that's all you need to memorize. Well, what is the number of output? What is the notation we use for this in this particular question? Q. Good. What is the price of output? P. But it's not given because the firm is monopolist. So the P is just use the inverse demand. So basically I invert this function, send P to the left hand side and Q to the right hand side. So 50 remains where it was. So that's the inverse demand. So the P, P of Q, that's the revenue minus the cost. The number of input, what is the notation for the number of input? N. In this particular question, the labors are denoted by N, N many workers. What is the price of input? Well, the firm is competitive, so it takes price as given, and it's the, the, the wage is denoted by W. Okay, so what is the monopolist is choosing to maximize this profit? Well, it chooses how much quantity to produce and how much labor to hire. So therefore, it chooses Q and N, some non-negative, oops, some non-negative real numbers. Well, obviously, subject to, right, the technology. Remember, don't forget, when we talk about input market, technology or the production function should always be included in your optimization problem. Subject to, output equals the function of input. Output equals function of input. So Q is equal to 2 times N. So whenever I see Q, I can just plug 2N and reduce the number of parameters into 1 rather than 2. So currently we have two variables to uh, maximize this function. I can reduce it into 1. All right. So equivalently, this is maximized by choosing Q which is non-negative real number, pi, where pi is, remember, instead of Q, I'm going to put 2N. So 2N times 50 minus 2N minus NW. What am I choosing? I'm choosing, oh, um, okay. Well, everything is written as a function of N, so therefore I'm choosing N, all right? So that's a nice 
uh, mistake that I did. All right, so whenever I see Q, I plugged 2n, and so everything became as a function of n. So therefore, remember, n is not something I'm choosing. As a, as a firm, I take wage as given. So therefore, I can't choose 250, right, or 2 or 50. So I'm choosing n only. That means the first order condition is that I take the derivative with respect to n and set it equal to 0 and solve for n. So what is the derivative of this function with respect to n? Well, this is, by the way, if you like, you can just multiply it. This is 100n minus 4n squared minus nw, right? So now it's easier to uh, differentiate. So its derivative is 100 minus 8n minus w equals 0. So what do I have? Remember, we take w as given, so we know the w. So that means this is 100 minus w equals 8n, hence n equals 100 minus w divided by 8. So you tell me what the w is, I can tell you what the number of uh, n should be, okay? And in fact, um, let me check. The question part B says, well, if W is, if W is, for example, $20, what is the optimal N? Well, simple, 100 minus 20, 80 divided by 8, so only 10 labors, all right? Well, but let's keep W as W, all right? Because if you change W, the, the N will be different, the Q and P will be different, so let's find everything as a function of W. So once I find the number of labor, how can I find the quantity and the price? Well, simple. In order to find quantity, use the production function, all right? So therefore, Q equals 2N, which means two times this fellow, 100 minus W divided by four, because two times eight, four. So that's the Q, that's it. So if W, for example, is $20, well, then Q is going to be 100 minus 20, 80 divided by 4, um, 20, okay? And finally, what is P? Well, to find P, use the inverse demand curve. Uh, 50 minus Q, which is 100 minus W divided by 4, so it's 200 minus W plus, I'm sorry, 100 plus W divided by 4. So therefore, P equals 100 plus W divided by 4. So therefore, if W was $20, well, then P would be 120 divided by 4, $30. Okay, that's it. So once again, for any problem you're given for this chapter, you just write down the profit function. All you have to re rem memorize is that the profit is always revenue minus cost, and the revenue is always equal to the number of outputs times the price of the output minus the number of input my times the price of the input. And here, for a specific question, the only difference is gonna be the notation for the number of output and the notation for number of input. Here in this question, the number of output is denoted by Q and the number of input is denoted by N. And the price of output, again, remember the notation of this specific question, but also remember whether the firm is competitive or monopsonist or monopolist. So the price of the output, if it is competitive, it's gonna be just one fixed P. If it is, Competitive in the input market, it's going to be just one fixed wage. But if it is monopolist, it's going to be an inverse demand curve. If it is monopsonist, it's going to be the increasing uh, supply curve. If it is both monopsony and a monopoly, well, then it's going to be inverse demand curve and the uh, increasing supply curve. Once you write the profit function, then use the production function and substitute one parameter and write it into another and hence make your profit function a function of one variable only.
Then the rest is very simple. First order condition, take derivative, set it equal to zero, solve it. And you're gonna find the one of your parameters. In this case, it's n, the number of workers. Obviously, it's gonna be a function of known parameters or uh, exogenous parameters. Exogenous. I mean, they are exogenous to the problem, meaning the, the, the firm in the problem should take that as given. And in this problem, the exogenous parameters are the demand curve, the production function, the wage, right? So therefore, you solve your variable n as a function of w. Fine. Well, then how can I recover for the other variables, quantity and, and price? Well, simple. For price, always use the inverse demand curve. And for quantity, always use the production function. That's it. Uh, once you do or follow those steps, there is no question you can't solve. All right. Hope that was clear.